Eight, the Eagles have one, and their fans do, from the Monday night home loss to the Falcons. Here's what it was. Saquon Barkley catches this pass, and the Eagles are 2-0. They go to Brazil, they have a home opener, and they're 2-0. He didn't, and the Eagles have now continued on a disturbing trend, a trend in which Peter Schrager dove deep into yesterday, which is Monday's loss marked the fourth time the Eagles blew a lead with under two minutes remaining. Even Scott Van Pelt was on the field with a minute 51 left. He's like, we're going to go into the winning team's locker room, and it looks like it's going to be the Eagles. Like, my goodness, what a way to set up the Falcons with the comeback. With this loss fresh in your mind, though, for the Eagles. They head to New Orleans, a streaking Saints team who are 2-0. What do the Eagles need to do to make sure that this loss lingers no longer, Peter? It, it, it could be an avalanche in Philadelphia. I have to set the scene again for viewers at home as I'm wearing my Eagles green here. I have nice. no connection to the team. They were coming into this thing off the win in Brazil. And everyone was feeling good, right. and it was flexing on the Giants fans because look what we're getting from Saquon. Three touchdowns. You idiots. How could you let him come to our team? And then we go on the other end, and it's Saquon dropping a pass with less than a minute left, and they end up losing and giving the game away. And Giants fans are like, that, that was what we got from Saquon in the big moments la like last year and the year before. So you know what? You guys have him. Mm. You got to erase it. Saquon needs to have a day because I'm watching every show yesterday, and it's, is it Saquon's fault? Is it Sirianni's fault? Is it the defense's fault? Is it Fangio's fault? Mm -hmm. It's just fault, 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 mm -hmm. negative, negative, negative. I was watching, and it's, you know, it's who should be the most embarrassed was a, was a subject line mm. on one of the Fox Sports 1 shows. And it's like, <laughs> they're going around the horn, and it's like, I think it's actually Saquon. No, I think it's actually Sirianni. You got to find a way to win, and you got to find a way to get Saquon some touches and to erase this narrative that Saquon suddenly is Mr. Butterfingers. That play was so crucial, but I also don't love the play call because Saquon was doing this all game. They couldn't stop him on the ground. And that's a good Falcons defense that was stopping them through the air for the most of the night. But, like, Saquon was just gashing them. And then in the biggest moment at third and three, it's a decision to not hand it off to him, but instead to pass to him. And I read the stat yesterday. Since 2021, no running back has more drops as a receiver than Saquon Barkley. And so when the game's on the line and there's all these discussions about game management, to throw the ball to Saquon, you're not putting him in his best position there as that's not an easy catch to make. It's also not putting your team or coach or anybody in the best because now we're spending the next few days talking about how it's not only the, the play call, it's, it's the, it's the catch ability. And then it's, well, what about our pass rush? What about our defensive backs not being able to stop anything? Where was Vic Fangio? What? It's the avalanche. It's the Philadelphia avalanche of once things get bad, it can get real bad. You got to get Saquon going. And you got to find a way to beat the Saints. You have to because this thing can get out of control quick, especially in that media market. Yeah, it's ab absolutely going to happen in the trenches. This is, you know, all the big names get all the attention, right? The Hurts and the Saquon. But I think it's going to happen in the trenches, especially for the Eagles offensive line. I mean, they really did help to propel Hurts to 85 yards in rushing and Saquon 95 yards. I mean, they they dominated the, the 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 run game in that in that situation. So I think it's going to start on that side, and then on the other side of the ball, I think the defensive line is going to have to step up because when you watch the Saints and the way they dominated against the Cowboys and the way they were hitting the the screen games and the way they were absolutely using the run technique to really be able to the the, the runs. They were really, really controlling that. And so I think for the Eagles, they have to be on top because if the Saints get out on top very fast, it could be very hard for them to play catch up. That's what happened to Dallas. Dallas just was, they were on their heels. They just, they couldn't keep up. I mean, so they have to be able to contain, contain the edges. When Alvin Kamara gets out there off to the, off to the edge, I mean, he's 88 and out the gate, and that can be very hard to control. So if they're going to overcome and get over this hangover, I think it's going to be winning it in the trenches, both on the defensive line and the offensive line. Yeah, I'm going to keep it simple and go from the team aspect and really just say they just have to finish. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles have put themselves in a good position. They are one and one. They obviously had a bad loss last week, but ultimately you just have to finish. They're doing really good things. They have this new weapon in Saquon Barkley that they're getting the rock to. They had 186 yards on the ground. They won the time of possession, 35, 35 minutes out of the 60 minutes of the game. When they got down to the red zone, they did not finish. They were 2 of 5 in the red zone. They had nine penalties. They beat themselves. So, ultimately, all the Eagles have to do is just go back to the basics, make sure you control the ball, don't turn the ball over like you've been doing, and just finish the game. Ultimately, you saw what Saquon Barkley did there. It's okay. He's going to be just fine. 
As long as you keep the ball out of the hands of the Saints and you take care of business, you finish these drives, you finish with touchdowns, you're going to be perfectly fine. I have a question for Isaiah because yeah. he's, he's two days now saying Saquon is their best playmaker. Like, you give him the ball. You, that's fine. In the locker room, after a drop like that, what's the conversation with the team? Is it even a thing? Or it's like, we got, we got his back no matter what. Or is someone saying, hey, you catch that ball. We're 2-0. We're, and we're not dealing with any of these questions. Yeah, nobody's questioning Saquon Barkley's abilities, right? Like, that you wouldn't even be in a position to win ball games if it wasn't for Saquon Barkley. You just mentioned it right there on the, on the film. He was killing them on the ground game. He was shaking everybody up, killing mm -hmm. them in the phone booth. So mm -hmm. that is your playmaker, yeah. right? So there's no issue. There's no question marks now. If this is a, a reoccurring problem, now you might start looking at him a little bit sideways. But this is a one-off occurrence for him with the Eagles. I know you're going to go back to the history. That's why I threw the Eagles in there. Mm -hmm. All right? But this is a one-time issue for him there. If these guys go out there and execute the way they've been doing, as Kellen Moore continues to get more comfortable with these weapons and learning how to use them pre-snap uh, reads, pre-snap motions, getting the ball in all the playmakers' hands defensively, Vic Vangio finds a way to get some pressure defensively. These guys are going to be all right. You already saw what Gardner Johnson said. Man, this is football, man. Yeah. Like, like yeah. this is a game. Like, everybody's going to make a mistake. They don't sound no alarm yet. But if they lose this game, then you might want to go ahead and do, and do the dog on siren like yeah. you were with the Chargers the other day. <laughs> and, and I'll add this, too, because I think it's a great question, Peter. Like, that drop, there's nothing worse than him making a mistake in the locker room turning against him and going, look at the mistake you made, right? Yeah. That's you, you. I mean, we are, you know, as athletes, we've got this strong mindset, but you start, like, just aimlessly picking out this one fault and going, oh, man, we can't trust you, that, become, that can mess up your best running back in yeah. the locker room. Yeah. So you say, you know what, hey, we got your back. We'll support you. You mess up. Will support you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. To me, that's that's great. That's a great mentality in a great locker room. And if you go back, right? If you go back and look at the film when they were interviewing Saquon Barkley, did you see the irritation level he had? Yes, right. Like, oh, did you, you ever yeah. see somebody's facial expression when they when, they, when, they, when their little when their cheekbone goes up? He was like, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Like, so you know, he was he was not happy about the situation, but he also owned it. Yeah, right? He said, right. you know, I went back to my old ways. I went back to my old ways. So he is going to go back. He's going to be in the jugs machine all day, all night, ensuring that his team understands that I can be counted on in these situations. That's right. He did own it. And, and one has to own when they have a hangover. I, I'm proud to say at this point in my life, I haven't been hungover in a while. <laughs> wow. But I do remember when you were, you got to go around and clean up the mess. You got to get rid You got to change some things. You got to. You got to pick up all the beer cans and mop up the vomit and call her an Uber. Just like you got to move on with your day. All right. So I just think like from here on out for the Eagles, this as a spectator and as an Eagles enthusiast, some things I just don't really want to hear or see anymore. For, first of all, I actually 24 hours later, I was really emotional yesterday about the end of the game because I'm a big football fan. I actually don't have any problem with the play call at all to Saquon. And I, I've come all the way around. And I think it must be infuriating for someone like Kellen Moore and Nick Sirianni to turn on the TV the next day and hear problems with the play call. And they're like, play call? It was the perfect play call. It was the perfect pass to our $25 million guaranteed running back. He's wide open. We throw it to him. If he catches it, as he had caught all four of his previous targets that night, we win the game in a walk-in. Just catch the ball. Don't tell me it's a play call. Who should be embarrassed? Saquon. We did our job. I don't want to hear about the play call anymore. Also, until further notice, I don't want to hear anything about the Eagles' vaunted blue chip defensive line. Uh, none of them. I don't care how many went to Georgia. I don't care how many of them were first round picks. Uh, Bryce Huff, they paid all a whole bunch of money. He has mm -hmm. zero pressures through two weeks. Not sacks, not quarterback hits, not even a pressure. They're generous with the pressure scoring. If you're within five yards of the got quarterback, a he got a pressure. <laughs> pressure. He doesn't even have a pressure. The only sack in that game came from Milton Williams, who was not a first round pick from Georgia. He's a third round pick, and he's the only guy who could sack Kirk Cousins, who's pushing 40 and could not move for most of the game. So I don't hear about the Eagles defensive line anymore. Also, I am all set on Big Dom. It, it just, in terms of the feeling and the aura of this team, the idea that the head of security is some sort of celebrity is undignified and it's become embarrassing. Guys, it was a fun story for a while. It was sort of a mascot factor. The players liked him. He has their backs. Don't mess with Big Dom. When we're doing pregame features involving the head of security for your team and then you blow a lead to Kirk Cousins on Monday Night Football, it becomes beneath you as an organization. I'm fine with the big dom now. Get off camera. Go be security agent, okay? 
Lastly, lastly, there's more. <laughs> uh, we we got to stop talking about the Eagles as if they're Super Bowl contenders. They're not one and one in my mind. They're two and seven. That that goes back to last year. Great job in Brazil. Amazing. If they played all their games in Brazil, they'd win the Super Bowl. When they come back to North America, they really don't win games, and they haven't for a long time. It's not a new problem. This is not a week two thing. It's a week. 18, 17, 16, 15, going back to last year. So not all is lost. You're one and one. It's September. We've got to change some things, or we're just going to be puking in the gutter again next mm. week. Cure the hangover now. Ooh, tell them how you really Very feel. good. It's very therapeutic for Kyle. It was visual. Uh, can we get the lower third back up yeah. so then when people see this on Twitter, I don't just look like a raging alcoholic who can just rip off about hangovers. I want to get the question underneath me before I unpack what it's really like to go through a hangover if you're a football fan. Listen. The only way into tough times is to go right through it. You can't go around a hangover. You, there's no trick. There's no drink that you can have. Drink this while you're drinking, coffee. and you will be alleviated next morning. It's none of those. It's not coffee. It's not, not greasy food. Does it, you just got to go through it. You got to live in it. Here are the steps. You sleep in. You pull the blanket over your covers. The Eagles fans are like, I don't want to address what happened last night. It was bad decision making. I can't face the, the truth of what happened to us, all right? Then it's about noon. You get out of bed. You don't want to move your head too much because you're like, my neck hurts. Like, I don't, the room is spinning. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. It's true. I'm going right back to my 20s. I'm taking that's you right there, the Isaiah. Back. I know. <laughs> Four o'clock comes. The anxiety starts to set in. You're like, why, why did I do all of that stuff? Why did I mix beer and then liquor and then wine? It's so bad. Everything was just brutal down the stretch. Listen. You're going to wake up the next morning. You're going to have had 100 ounces of water that day. You're just trying to flush everything that happened to you and all the bad memories. The next day, you feel great, okay? Your system is cleared. It's week three. You're taking on the Saints. But you got to make good decisions this time around, okay? You're going to New Orleans. Bad decisions can be made in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I hear that, okay? The Saints, they smell blood in the water. They think they can beat you up, beat up on you. The only way through a bad hangover is through it. Eagles fans, you could do this. Eagles, I'm hoping you can do it because it's a better league when you're a better team. And I don't like this kind of fodder where we have ha football hangover and Eagles in the same question. It's very stressful. 